Hi everyone, my name is Liz Lapidow. I'm a graduate student at UCSD with Dr. Karen Walker, and today I'm going to be talking about work done in collaboration with Dr. Isabella Killeen, Exploration Decisions Proceed and Improve Preschoolers' Explicit Uncertainty Judgments. So preschool-aged children have traditionally been described as eternal optimists. When asked how certain they are, children younger than age six typically respond with overconfidence about the accuracy of their knowledge, even when the information they have is uncertain or incomplete. This overconfidence is typically ascribed to a lack of metacognition, the cognitive process by which we introspect on our knowledge and mental states, allowing us to evaluate and verbalize them. This ability doesn't fully develop until middle childhood. However, it would be wrong to say that children are completely unaware of their own uncertainty. On the contrary, even very young children prefer to explore what is unknown, uncertain, or unusual. This marked decision-making behavior implies that children must recognize, at the very least intuitively, the incompleteness of their knowledge under uncertainty. Now, obviously, implicit sensitivity to uncertainty is not the same thing as metacognition, nor is that the claim. Instead, children's preferences during exploration suggest that there might be a connection between uncertainty and decision-making that precedes the ability to metacognitively monitor and report on uncertainty in childhood. So we're not the first people to suggest this. Research into the development of metacognition, primarily by Simona Getty, Emily Hembacher, and their colleagues, also points out that young children's choices and actions often seems to distinguish between what they do and don't know in a way that their explicit evaluations of that knowledge or confidence simply does not. These two aspects of children's cognition are referred to as uncertainty monitoring, which is explicit, and uncertainty control, which is implicit. Explicit awareness of uncertainty is typically measured by presenting children with a visual confidence scale, like this one, with fixed points corresponding to different degrees of certainty, and asking children to use the scale to indicate how sure they are about a judgment. Competent use of the scale is indicated by higher average ratings for correct than incorrect judgments. In contrast, implicit measures of uncertainty control don't require children to indicate their confidence at all, but to draw on it in order to make decisions. For example, selecting which of their judgments they want to be graded on and which not. So in general, children's performance on implicit decision-making based measures distinguishes between their certain and uncertain judgments before their explicit scale-based evaluations of those judgments. The sensitivity to uncertainty that precedes explicit confidence is seen on a variety of tasks. Um, in addition to selection for evaluation, decisions about how much time to spend studying, when to seek help, and when to opt out of making a judgment altogether have all reported this pattern. But how do you get from competence here to competence here, from implicit to explicit awareness of your own uncertainty? Well, this idea that children have a kind of implicit access to their knowledge states from their decision-making behavior raises an interesting possibility that decision-making itself might be an actual mechanism in the development of metacognition. Repeated experience of uncertain decisions, repeated observation of the connection between implicit awareness of incomplete knowledge and the ultimate accuracy of judgments, whether you are right or wrong in these situations, might highlight this connection for children in a way that could support their ability to reflect and report on it. So, in the current project, we investigated two interconnected ideas. First, that being wrong, that is observing surprising or disconfirming evidence, which we know from exploration research highlights for children the incompleteness of their knowledge, might also provide experience that supports the ability to introspect on their own uncertainty. And second, the decision-making in exploration may itself be another as yet uninvestigated instance of the implicit early access to knowledge states that precedes metacognitive introspection. So, to investigate these possibilities in children four and five years old, we used a novel method developed by Dr. Killeen for presenting and manipulating degree of uncertainty. So at the start of this task, children are shown three windows made of construction paper and plastic sleeves. For one window, which I'm gonna call clear, there's only an outer frame of paper between the clear front and opaque back of the sleeve. Another frame has both, another window has both a frame and a crossbar. So the opaque back is partially visible. And the third full window, you can't see inside of at all. So this very neatly allows us to present three distinct levels of ambiguity by the degree to which the window is occluded, ranging from the certain clear window to the uncertain full window. To demonstrate this distinction, the experimenter begins each study by explaining that we can put things behind the windows. She brings out three identical paper circles and places each circle behind one of the windows. Now, of course, children don't actually have any uncertainty about the occluded windows here because they know what shapes are inside. 
However, on the task trials, where windows are presented with the shapes already inside them, there's no way to know for certain what shape is behind the two windows that are occluded. There's maximal uncertainty about the full window. However, there's also uncertainty about the partial window. Because even though it seems obvious that it contains the same shape as the clear window, there's always the possibility that something entirely unexpected is actually inside. So the partially occluded window allows us to create a reasonable expectation and then violate it by presenting one of these cutout shapes. We can create an experience of surprising, disconfirming evidence following from uncertainty, an experience which we hypothesize may scaffold children's explicit uncertainty monitoring by highlighting the incompleteness of their knowledge under uncertainty. So we can ask children two kinds of questions about these windows. First, to assess explicit uncertainty monitoring, children are shown a three-point confidence scale, which they are taught represents not sure at all, a little bit sure, and very sure, and a picture of the shape inside of the clear window. For each of the three windows, the experimenter asks children to use the scale to indicate how sure they are that the shape behind the window is the same as the one in the picture. Conversely, to assess exploration decisions, children are instead asked to find out more about the contents of the windows and given a choice of which one of the three they want to explore by revealing the shape inside. So the only difference between our implicit and explicit measures is the question that is asked. And to our knowledge, this is the first study to directly compare children's information seeking decisions to their confidence scale use for the same stimuli. Given past research on exploration decisions in childhood, we expect children to correctly identify either the full or the partial window, the ones about which they are missing information, as the best places to search for new information. In this way, we can see if exploration, like other decision domains, shows a sensitivity to uncertainty, even at an age where children's explicit confidence ratings might not. So using these two novel questions, we conducted three interconnected experiments. In experiment one, we looked at children's explicit confidence ratings. We present the windows which differ in degree of uncertainty and ask children to rate their certainty using the scale. After each window is rated, the experimenter reveals the shapes inside, showing uh, surprising disconfirming evidence behind the partial window. On the second trial, the same procedure is used, but with a new set of windows and shapes. Um, and when the shapes are revealed, the, cutout, the surprising cutout shape's location is counterbalanced. Children are then asked to rate their confidence for a third and final set of windows. Comparison of how accurate four and five-year-olds are in reporting their certainty, first at baseline, then again after experiencing surprising disconfirming evidence, will indicate whether or not the experience of the association between incompleteness of knowledge and judgment accuracy supports children's explicit uncertainty monitoring. So, following Hembacher and Getty, each point on the scale is rated from one to three. This allows us to look at average confidence score for each of the windows and between each age group to see if children distinguished between certain and uncertain in their explicit responses. Overall, the baseline responses do make some distinction. Children's average confidence ratings for the full window are significantly lower than for the clear window. So average confidence of the partial window falls in between and doesn't differ significantly from the other two. So it would seem that even without any previous experience with the scale or exposure to disconfirming evidence, children were able to make a binary distinction between what was known and what was unknown. However, when we look at the average ratings for each age group, we see that this is only true for the older children. Both age groups are showing characteristic overconfidence here. Their ratings for the uncertain windows are all well above the halfway point. But even so, the five-year-olds know that they're still more confident where they have certainty, while the four-year-olds don't initially make that distinction. Five-year-olds were significantly more confident they knew what shape was behind the clear window than for the two occluded windows, which didn't differ. By contrast, four-year-olds' average ratings are all somewhere around 2.5. Their responses indicated essentially no awareness that there was any difference between the windows. So from here, the question is, will the experience of surprising disconfirming evidence make any difference to this baseline? Will the experience of being wrong about what shape is really inside the partial window help children more accurately reflect and report on what they don't know? So overall, the answer seems to be yes. While the average confidence for the certain window didn't differ between trials in one, one and three, children's confidence about the windows that were uncertain were both significantly lower after observing disconfirming evidence behind the partial window. So we look at this effect within each age group. We see that it's driven by the younger children. Five-year-old's average ratings are more accurate, but only slightly. 
while the four-year-old's ratings of the full and partial windows were significantly lower than at baseline and significantly lower than their ratings of the clear window. So in the absence of direct feedback and with the same amount of practice on the task as the, the five-year-old's, four-year-old's explicit uncertainty monitoring improved simply from the experience of being wrong suggesting that disconfirming evidence does indeed do something to highlight the incompleteness of uncertain knowledge for young children and may support the development of metacognition. So with this picture of explicit uncertainty monitoring in place, we are able to compare it to the, imp the potential implicit sensitivity of exploration decisions in experiment two. So this experiment is conducted in two parts with two different groups of children. In experiment 2a, we presented the same stimuli, but instead asked children which of the windows they wanted to explore, um, if implicit sensitivity to uncertainty in exploration decisions does indeed precede that of explicit uncertainty judgments in children, we expect baseline exploration preference in 2A to distinguish between the certain and uncertain windows, even though the baseline confidence ratings in experiment one did not. Then in experiment 2B, a different group of children followed the same procedure as in experiment one. However, on that third and final trial, they were instead asked to choose which window to explore. In this way, we can characterize sensitivity to uncertainty after observing disconfirming evidence, both within implicit decision making and between implicit decision making and explicit uncertainty monitoring. So first, in 2A, we look at baseline exploration decisions, and we see that overall, the vast majority of children spontaneously chose to explore one of the two occluded windows. In fact, they chose to explore most where they had the least information, indicating that at least intuitively, they seem to know, as one child said, the one you can't see is the one that tells you stuff. So this successful identification of what they did and didn't know persists even when we break down the responses by age group. So unlike confidence rating, the responses of the two age groups show much the same pattern at baseline and both show sensitivity to uncertainty. The four and five-year-olds significantly preferred to explore the full window and there was no difference in the distribution of choices between the age groups. So that any prior experience of the task or of the potential contents of the windows, children spontaneously distinguished between certainty and uncertainty here, preferentially and correctly choosing to explore what they did not know over what they did know in order to learn more. So given the sensitivity and success at baseline, it's perhaps unsurprising that post-evidence choices of children in experiment 2b show the same overall pattern. Again, children chose to explore most where they had the greatest uncertainty, and we found there was no difference in the exploration patterns of the younger and the older children. So there's no difference from baseline here, either for the whole sample or for the age groups. And the fact that we find no effect of disconfirming evidence on exploration behavior is perhaps a little surprising, but it supports the hypothesis that young children have a kind of implicit access to their own knowledge and confidence states from their decision-making behavior. They were already sensitive and knew how to respond to the incompleteness of their knowledge about the uncertain windows, even before it was highlighted for them. So overall, what have we learned about children's implicit and explicit sensitivity to uncertainty? Well, in experiment one, four-year-olds initially indicated that they were equally confident about all three windows. Following the experience of disconfirming evidence, however, their pattern of their confidence ratings was indistinguishable from that of the older children. Given that five-year-olds didn't similarly improve between trials one and three, this is unlikely to be due merely to practice with the task. And indeed, both age groups are still overconfident on trial three but that overconfidence was moderated and baseline performance was improved by the experience of surprising, disconfirming evidence, suggesting it as a novel potential building block for the development of metacognition. We also compared this to children's exploration decisions. Implicit decision-making has previously been suggested as an early competence and awareness of uncertainty, but to our knowledge, this is the first study to directly compare children's information-seeking decisions to their confidence scale use for the same stimuli. We found that both four and five-year-olds showed sensitivity to their own uncertainty, preferentially choosing to explore where they had incomplete information, even before the presentation of disconfirming evidence. These findings add to the claim that children implicitly recognize what is most likely to be informative well before they are able to explicitly articulate that understanding, and suggest that children's decision-making during information search may well be an early developing form of implicit uncertainty control as well as providing a robust measure of children's recognition of what they do and don't know. So with that, I'd like to thank my co-authors, RAs, funding sources, and our testing sites. For further information, you can find me at the info below. And thank you all so much for listening.